Hi there and welcome to the second part of my shooting tutorial with Raycast projectiles. We're going to go on to the next part of this tutorial and we're going to make the gun. Um, there's no point in having a bullet without a gun. So um, what we're going to do is just get started with that. So if we um, want to create an empty uh, game object that's going to be our gun and we're just going to rename that as gun <coughs> and what we're going to do is turn the bullet into a prefab now, um, for some strange reason, I noticed that I haven't managed to uh, to do this part that we did at the end of the tutorial, so I'll just quickly fix that. So I should see that the uh, the bullet still works as expected. It should um, shoot along, and it should be bigger at one end than it is the other. Um, now, this to turn this into a prefab, if you don't already know, we can literally just pull this bullet game object down into the scene, and with the new Unity. 2018 we can actually open up the prefab um, view so if you double click this or if you click open prefab over here you'll end up seeing the inside of the scene view just the prefab on its own so if you need to make any changes to it um, you can make changes to it in here and then um, you're able to just go back and it's automatically saved so we don't need to have prefabs on our scene uh, in order to, to change them and um, with that in mind I'm just going to remove this prefab now that it is been has been turned into a prefab. I'm going to remove it and put it um, down in my assets so that it's not on the scene. So we're going to need a script for this gun and right now the gun is literally just an empty game object that's sitting at a certain position. I'm going to move it right to the middle of the world by resetting and just double click to, to go in. So we should be able to see this with our camera. I'm going to move the camera just slightly to the side. Um, one little tip is if you if you want to see where this is um, you can click on the little box next to the game object name and just choose a colour um, of one of these labels and the label will appear there so um, it's quite handy as you're moving around your scene you're able to see where it is. I might move this forward just a touch and down so I'm imagining that this gun is just um, sitting off to my right hand side and just slightly below. So uh, yeah let's get around to the script. So with this, uh, with the gun here what we're going to do is just create a new script um, so if we click on new script we're going to call this gun because it's going to be the gun and uh, we'll open this up and we'll start coding for the gun. So a couple of things that we need, um, firstly we're, we're going to do an inefficient method of doing this to begin with and then we're going to look at refactoring and making this code more efficient. So um, right now we're just going to do the simple instantiate so in order for us to do that I'm going to create a public game object in here and we're going to call it the um, bullet prefab um, for now so um, bullet prefab is going to be the object that we instantiate um, we're going to check inside of update uh, for a key press as well so if you type in F and double tap tab and then we'll fill out this condition so I'm going to check for the input dot get mouse button down and this one this one checks if a mouse button has been pressed down and um, you can look this up in the help if you wish but um, it will only fire once and it won't fire again if you leave the mouse button down so we're going to work on as if it's like a, a pulling a trigger and um, the mouse button zero is the left hand uh, mouse button and you can again check that in the, doc the documentation if you want to so basically if we get to here we want to shoot um, and all we're going to do is instantiate the object right now so if we um, if we just instantiate um, instantiate we'll choose the uh, bullet prefab to instantiate and we'll instantiate at the transform dot position of the gun and the transform dot rotation of this gun and that um, should be enough to have a very very basic shooting so um, we can take this out for now we can put it back in if we need it later and uh, right now it's a really simple couple of scripts we've got a bullet with um, with a bullet trail that updates its position based on speed and we've got a gun that instantiates that bullet once it's done. So um, in order to get this to work inside of our game um, we have to click on the gun, uh, attach the gun script to it, make sure the gun script is on, oh, not twice, um, and oh, come on. Um, remove that component and then take the prefab that we want and add it into this bullet prefab slot for now. 
Um, what that means is that when I press the uh, trigger, if we just test this, so I'm going to play the game. When I um, hit the left mouse button, I should see a bullet shoot off um, and the trail moves off in a direction. Um, the uh, we could easily add in um, an automatic uh, kind of gun as well. Um, so if we want to be able to shoot like a machine gun, um, I might do this in this tutorial and then we can work on making it uh, a bit more efficient and adding some of the effects to it. Um, so it, I'll just do this anyway. So what we're going to do is um, to make it an automatic gun, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say float fire rate and uh, this is how many bullets I want in, in every single second um, I could make this one public actually so that we can change this inside the editor and um, we want to say uh, this will be a private float and it will be um, time since last shot and it sounds like a really big variable name but um, it's a descriptive variable name and I'll hopefully not have to type the whole thing out. Um, so what we're going to do is inside of the update, if we want this to happen, um, what we need to do is we need to say that the um, that the time since last shot uh, needs to go up. So it goes up by time dot delta time. And then uh, if we use the uh, get mouse, so we're not doing get mouse button down, we're saying get mouse button. So if the mouse button is down, this will fire, but we're going to add in the condition, the two ampersand signs, that the um, time since last shot, time since last shot is greater than one divided by the fire rate. So that'll say like um, how long it's been since the last uh, the last time it's shot and if it's um, if it's greater than uh, one over the fire rate uh, in other words if you're allowed to shoot again then you should do this shoot part now the only thing we have to add to this is we need to make sure that the time since last shot uh, goes back to zero so that it doesn't shoot absolutely every frame so um, saving this code uh, we can go back to unity and what you'll find now is um, the, not only does the variable appear up here, but uh, when you hit play, um, if you were to just press your button down, you'll see that it fires once every um, what ten times a second. And uh, the last thing that I did notice that I want to fix before finishing this video is that the um, if you notice when you do all the firing, the bullets don't actually get destroyed. So if I create the bullets, they end up uh, staying in the game object list and we probably want them to destroy at some point so I'm going to do the simplest um, method right now and make sure they destroy after a set length of time so jumping back into my code um, if we go to the bullet itself um, what we're going to do is just inside the empty start function that we have here we're just going to say uh, to destroy the game object and uh, in Unity we just can do a delayed, um, a delayed object now it's not the most efficient thing in the world and I'm, I'm going to fix that in a second um, but uh, right now this will work so uh, what we have is the effect of shooting and uh, it does look pretty good it looks quite similar to uh, the likes of games that you might get um, in Battlefield uh, or other games uh, where there are projectiles uh, you can tweak these values as much as you like to see what you um, to change the length of it uh, if you wish um, but in the next tutorial we're going to go over detecting collisions with our 